Hi, welcome to a brand new Seven Spot video. This time we're going to be at the Malvern Show, having a look around the club sites, and we're going to poke around in the corners and try and find some of those more unique vehicles that you don't normally see on these videos. I hope you enjoy it, and if you do, please click that subscribe button. Now here's something that you don't see every day. These are Hudson Kindred Spirits. Now, would you believe this is actually Renault 5 base? Now, one of the reasons for that is that the gearbox was actually in front of the engine. It wasn't a transverse engine. This is the early days of front-wheel drive cars. So the engine sat back here and your gearbox is on the front axle line. The original car was a Hudson Free Spirit and that was a single seater, but didn't sell that well. So they moved on to making it a two seater. And by doing that, they added 12 inches into the wheelbase and that made it very similar to the original car. As you can see, this car sticks with its original Renault heritage, original Renault wheels on it. And then next to it, we've got an even rarer version, which is, even though it's badged as a kindred spirit, it was actually called a White Wizard. Now, a chap called White, he actually brought the, the remaining stock uh, when the original owner sold the business on and he sold them under his own brand, a White Wizard, but after that, didn't actually sell any more. And I understand, in fact, some of these were sold in Germany. Uh, you can denote those because the roll bar is covered by a, a fiberglass piece, but they were copies. They weren't anything to do with the original um, builders of this car. And what actually happened was they managed to get it TUV approved, which is something you need in Germany to get literally anything on the road. And it's a lot harsher than our own IVA. Um, but I think these are really great little cars. Uh, you can see at the back there, the original Renault 5 Lite. So it did use an awful lot of uh, bits and pieces from the donor. And I just think these are really great, quirky little cars. We're on the JZR Pilots stand, and yes, I was right, Pilots, not drivers. The JZR, three wheel, very much in that Morgan style car. Originally with the Honda CX500 engine, the car next to me over there has got the CX650 engine. Great little car, obviously very much Morgan inspired, and that's been in, in um, Malvern. Morgan are literally just up the road. We could almost throw a stone and, and hit their factory. So these two cars, really nice, classic examples. On the end is a more modern version. We've got this one. It's still got a Honda engine, but it's the, uh, the pan-European engine, which is a 12-cylinder V4. So this, is a, this one is an absolute literal flying machine, hence the, uh, the pilots um, association rather than drivers. But this is a great looking car. And I understand uh, you can actually still buy one of these, but they only sell them now as turnkey cars. And I think the most popular choice is this uh, um, pan-European engine. So if you want one, this is what you could get. And it's JZR is the, the name. Now, just behind, we've got a little bit of an interloper here. Now, not many people would know what this is, but being the, the, the sad geek of kit cars that I am, I know what this one is. It is a Malone Skunk. Now, this was available uh, a few years ago, as a, I uh, believe, as a kit. It's got a Yamaha, I think it's 900cc engine in the front. Uh, I believe it was the XJ, because that was shaft drive, uh, and that drives to the, the single rear wheel. So this is very much in the style of the JZRs, but it is a very much of its own design. Um, in fact, I'm wrong, because there is a chain drive to the rear wheel. So but there were very, very few of these cars produced. I think it was offered around the sort of early 2000s. But yeah, some really interesting cars here on this stand. Okay, here we are on the JPSC stand. Now, JPSC stands for Jeremy Phillips Sports Cars, and Jeremy Phillips was renowned as the owner and manufacturer of the Silver Ranger cars. And we've got three great examples here today. 
we've got the Mojo. Now, this was originally a Fiesta based car, uh, which he introduced in the early 2000s. I believe, and I might be corrected, uh, it was the first mid engined um, silver, and it's the start of taking those front wheel drive components and moving them to the rear of the car. But this car I know was noted as a really neat handling little car, and that's common throughout all the, the silver um, cars. Then next along, I'm 99% sure this is a Phoenix. Uh, it's like a full bodied version of a Lotus 7 style car. Um, it's quite nice styling on this one. Uh, there's a, a Fury here as well. Again, that's a very similar style car. Um, it's bridging that gap between a sports car and like a, uh, a normal sort of seven with the open wheel style, particularly at the front. And then third in line, uh, we've got the Silver Riot. Now, the Riot was spelt with an R1 at the front because it reused an R1 Yamaha engine at the back. Um, now, I believe this is what this car has got in because I think as the model was developed, other options came along. Uh, but this is like a scaled down, or, or not scaled down, it's more of a, a stripped down version of the Mojo, similar in concept with the rear engine, um, but very much obviously trimmed down with the bodywork side of it. But uh, silver, silver cars, very well known for great handling, very lightweight, very nice cars. And now on the JBA stand, these are one of my all time favorite cars, the JBA Falcon. I think these are a brilliant little car. It's what kit cars should always be about. It's a unique design. It was based on the Cortina and then later the Sierra. And it even was featured on TV. I think the program was called The Chaser. It was actor Clive somebody, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but he was a, uh, it was a really popular program in its day and they sold loads of these kits back in the 80s and into the early 90s. Uh, it, the ownership of this has changed hands a couple of times since then, and a few years ago there was uh, somebody trying to relaunch this with BMW Mechanicals. They certainly built one demonstrator, but unfortunately it's really gone a little bit quiet since then. But really, if you're looking for a nice, unique kit car, you can't go further than probably one of these JBA Falcons. We're here on the, the Rickman stand, and we've got some real staples of the 1990s kit car scene. Their first car to the market, because bear in mind, Rickman up to this point were known for making motorcycle frames and motorcycle accessories, things like uh, uh, panniers and top boxes, and, and fairings, of course. Now, this was their first car to the market, and it was very much based on the design around the Suzuki SJ410 of the time, which was still an expensive car, but this utilised the mechanicals of a Mark One or Two Escort, and also things like the interior. You used the dashboard, the seats, and so on. This was a great little car, and very much emulated the the car it was designed from, which was the uh, the SJ410. And this was their first car to the market, and was a pretty straightforward build um, because literally you're bolting those mechanicals from your rusty Escort under the Rickman body. Developed from the original uh, Rickman Ranger was the Space Ranger, which is this car you can see in front of you now. And this is a particularly, this is a Highline version. You can see that by the, the step up in the roof. And this is just a longer wheel based version, um, more like an estate car. And almost you could argue this is like the pre-runner to the SUVs of today. And great little car again, again uses the original um, Escort dashboard. It's such a great little car uh, and really practical on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, after these two cars, they went all out, did Rickman, and look at this. There are very few of these in existence. It's a Rickman Rancher, and apart from uh, the, um, the Starcraft, it's probably one of the only kit motorhomes available. Again, based on the, uh, the Mark II Escort, it's great little thing if you want something small for going away for the weekend what could be better and obviously you need to fit out the back 
and get all your your fridges and obviously the outlet for it there um but i think this is a great little thing imagine you, you combine kit cars and motorhomes all in one what could be better And here we have something you've probably not seen before. This is a R Royale drophead. Now, the JBA Falcon, the JBA was the initials of the guys that built that car, or designed and built that car. Now, the B was John Barlow, and he um, went out on his own after a few years with JBA and started putting out his own designs. And this was the first of them. This is a Jaguar based car, and doesn't it look absolutely fantastic? It's, it's based on Jaguar Mechanicals, and it, it looks like it just rolled out of a 1930s um, factory. Absolutely gorgeous, front to back. Um, there was around about 27 of these cars produced, and obviously, imagine you'd be hiring this out for weddings or, or anything like that. It's absolutely fantastic. Just love these little niche cars.